Hey everybody, welcome to the third episode of My, my Lash Two, two Brain, Brain Cells. Cells. I'm your host, Maddie Morris, and this is my husband, Elliot Morris. And today, what are we talking about? We are talking about how to get booked, get busy, and get money. <laughs> that was a stupid intro. <laughs> <laughs> what, okay, what would you what would you do? I just think that I mean, there's no there's no way to say it that doesn't sound kind of girl boss hustle grindy. But this is an episode on how to actually get clients, actually have consistent bookings. Um, and I think I think the the title is going to be. I mean, they'll see have seen the title, but I think it's going to be how I am fully booked and charging two hundred and ten dollars a fill. Yeah, I think that's a good title. Yeah, I think it's clickable, and that is what we are going to. Uh, talk about and we are going to expand on all of that because you are fully booked your books are closed and a lot of people think i'm lying yeah like, people don't believe that you're charging 200 don't believe no me. yeah yeah last people... artists will literally comment on some of my photos and stuff and they'll be like you're lying and i'm like you're lying go to my if you go to my website like like those are my prices says... and i'm fully booked i like do you want me to send me, you my google calendar yeah like i don't it, like yeah, we don't need to prove and, it or to pe- people. And pe- but. Well, but people say my clients would never pay that, and I'm like, P- probably not. Probably no, not. No, that's true. Like you, that's one of the things we're going to talk about. My like, clients would not pay that three years ago. No, yeah, you a, as you raise your prices, you get different clients. Yeah, like you, you can't just raise your prices from seventy dollars a fill to two hundred dollars a fill and expect to keep all the same clients because clients have it's a different budgets. world. It's a yeah. different world. It's different. It's different people, and yeah. some people they're out there like we can tell you from experience are absolutely willing to pay 210 bucks for a fill i just want to preface like because those comments kind of hurt a little bit and i'm like if you see someone that is is being transparent about what they're doing and they're trying to help you don't like bully them don't be mean to them just take inspiration from them learn how they do it if they're offering to tell you how to do it yeah like the only reason we're public about any of that is because our goal, like our overarching goal is for other people to be there too. And yeah. and if people don't think it's possible, it, it makes it so much harder to get there. Like you would have raised your prices to this point l- earlier if you didn't think it was an entirely ridiculous price point. Yeah. Like we had talked about this years ago. I mean, not a long time ago because you, you truly, you have to get extremely extremely good in order to yeah. charge these prices Techn- but technically you have to be an exceptionally good lash artist to charge those prices absolutely but i think there are those lash artists are out there mm-hmm. and they could be charging this much yeah. if more people kind of realize that it was possible and we're with this episode we want to talk about how it's possible like what you need to provide in order to justify that kind of a price point and how to find those clients that will that will pay that happily too because yeah. your tips tell me tell them what your tips are my clients a lot of people are like well i bet your clients are like they hate your prices my clients tip me 30 to 50 dollars every single time every two weeks yeah it's, it's my, crazy i mean i can't get rid of my clients i've raised my prices to you know to, now they're 180 dollars, and my my average sale is still 245 yeah and know? and to be fully like just to to put it all out there so you have uh, do you have one week fills? Um, Are they on your website? Yeah, I have one week fills, so but it's really just for one, special events. Yeah, so it's just, that's just like a little touch up. The majority of your clients are doing two week or three week fills. Your yes. three week fills are two hundred and ten dollars. Yes, and you have quite a few clients a that come in yeah. every three weeks. Yeah, and then your two week fills are one hundred and eighty dollars, and that's what the majority of your clients are on. So yeah. one hundred and eighty dollars fills, but then they end up tipping to where you get usually like two twenty five per fill, correct? Yeah. and that's on the one hundred and eighty dollars fills. Yeah. So and also I made a decision early on that I was going to be in this industry for the long run. I was going to be in this industry long term. And my biggest my life's mission is to get other people to suffer less than I did and to get to where I am faster without as much heartbreak like that truly fills my soul, makes my heart happy. And so um, I I want to be at a high price point because I'm in you know, I own a salon suite. I want to be in a position where I can inspire and encourage everyone around me to get there like i feel like if i was charging 90 dollars a fill still oh yeah people wouldn't be as inclined to take my trainings they wouldn't um, the renters wouldn't be able to charge more than that the renters wouldn't be able to charge more than that like i want to set a precedent that this is the new standard of what you can charge yeah. like i want people to say i can charge that much one day because maddie charges that much yeah 
There's and, nothing- and hopefully soon, a lot of people are yeah. going to be charging that much. So it's not just bringing, you know, it's not just, uh, you know, uh, girl bossing my way to the top. Like, I want to raise the whole industry. Yeah. I want to raise the standard of what experts in this industry can be charging. Absolutely. Comfortably and have their clients be comfortably, uh, you know, be accustomed to that price point because yeah. they there's other artists charging that. Yeah, absolutely. It's- and it's And the thing is, too, like, at those prices, you're still turning away so many people. I turn away multiple clients a day. Yeah. And and the nice thing about that is that then you're able to give them really great recommendations of people in the yeah, building. Yeah. Like our our besties who rent. Yeah, right? Yeah. So it's it, it really works out. It works out really well. Um for where you're at, like having the studios honestly is so nice because like if we didn't have the studios you would have, you know, some lash artists that you knew, but it's really nice to be able to, you know, support all the people who are like renting from us yeah. and give them clients who who are clearly willing to pay high prices because yeah. they're trying to book with you. I mean, to, it, to its core, Lightheart is a not competitive environment. No, it 100%. Is, it is its own thing. And people truly like enjoy giving their you know like referring people to everyone in the building it's it's awesome i love it and that was one thing at first i was actually like to be totally honest i was a little scared having like multiple lash artists in here because i'm like i didn't want it to be competitive and it's not but it really isn't it really isn't well and and part of it is just because everyone's operating from like a place of abundance like no one no one's like oh man like uh Lindsay took my clients or (laughs) just took my clients and And like oh no everyone is like everyone's fully bugged everyone wants people to do well Everyone in here yeah. wants each other to succeed. Yeah. They genuinely want the best for each other. And we've just, you know, been able to be so lucky with who's who's in here. Yeah. And I'm really amazing. and I always have said to my students, you know, you can't operate from a place of everyone is my competition because there is a client for everyone and there's an artist for everyone. Yeah. And you're not. I'm, and there's I know. definitely clients that do not match up with certain artists. And it's not because the artist is bad. No. And it's not because the client's bad. It's just they're. People have different personalities. Yeah. They want different things. I'm not for everybody, but 100%. I am for I am for a select group of people and they and I can really and they're out there. They're out there. Especially in Scottsdale. That's yeah. that's one of the other things we're gonna talk about. But I, this isn't like this isn't like an ad for for why you should rent at Lightheart, but we're we're rented. We're booked and busy. Where we are, but yeah, like <laughs> we do not have any rooms available. Um uh, but yeah, I mean I think we should could just jump right into like how other people can raise their prices like you can't immediately raise your prices to 210 dollars. like yeah. that would nuke your clientele if you go from like 90 dollars to two to 180 dollars for a fill absolutely. but there are absolutely things you can do today in your business to start laying the foundation to charge much higher prices and yeah. to be fully booked and so that's what we're going to go into yeah there are four basics that you need to be doing um, without a without a shadow of a doubt, there are four things you need to be doing in order to be consistently booked. And if you all do all these four things well, I don't see how you can't be booked. No, yeah, you you won't. the The people who are successful are the people who do the basics all the time and who never stop doing the basics. And yeah. the secrets to being successful in the lash industry they're they're not secrets. They're not complicated. No one's gatekeeping anymore. No one's it's no one's 20, gatekeeping. It's almost 2023 and no one's gatekeeping the people it's that great. are at, the people that are off the top are sharing everything they know. It's amazing. It's amazing. And that's like we they're building mentorship programs, 100%. they're teaching trainings. There's not that like com, like a uh, competition anymore where it used to be 10 years ago. No. Cuz 10 years ago if you asked someone like oh, what tweezers yeah. they use, they wouldn't oh, tell you. Oh, people wouldn't tell you. But yeah. nowadays people want to help it's great if you look for it people want to help it's yeah it's amazing and like that's what we're trying to do with the podcast like not that we're at the top of the industry far from it but we know that like we've had a like you've had a long like come up and so hopefully we can help people who are kind of earlier in their career than you are like we're farther along than quite a few people and so those are the people who hopefully like by letting them know like what we did and what everyone who's doing well is doing that we can help them do better yeah so So what are the basics number one and i mean you need to be easy to find convenient to book with um easy to book and the experience of people finding you getting referred to you booking with you needs to be absolutely seamless and comfortable frictionless frictionless (laughs) it um yeah it's and there's tactically like there's little things you can do like having a website having online booking it is mm-hmm. huge it's really big especially if you're building your clientele yeah. and you are advertising online like not paying for ads but you're like advertising through your instagram you're like posting your work and stuff like having a website and posting 
your website URL in your Instagram bio and saying, hey, my website is in my Instagram bio. Mm -hmm. You can book there being very clear and obvious about and it. And nowadays people's attention span is so short that, I mean, it's like if someone sees you out in public and says, I love your, you know, I love your lashes, who does them? Oh my gosh, I'm a lash artist. Scan my QR code. Bam. Yeah. Send them to your Take website. Take them to your website yeah. or give them a card. Give them a card with your website on it. Basic. Yeah. Easy. It's, it's, that is number one, be so easy. Don't require huge deposits. If you are getting no showed a lot with people who are booking online, you can require a deposit like a, a 20 or $30 deposit, something that's not ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but don't charge a deposit every time. This is slightly an unpopular opinion, but I don't um, charge a deposit every time. And I mean, for the last, I mean, for new clients, for, for new, a long for time new, you did. Yeah. For new clients. And still to this day, I require a one time full set deposit, which just, um, you know, if they no show it. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a little insurance for you. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, But also I'm pretty strict. If someone no shows me, I never see them again. Yep. I physically rebook them to someone else because that becomes a habit. Yep. It is a habit. If someone no shows you their first appointment, I guarantee it'll happen again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If they no show the first time, yeah. like, nah, yeah. you don't want them. I mean, if, if it was an emergency, I'm very kind about it. I'll wave it, whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, but pre-booking is is key and you are not building your business on full sets you're building your business on fills we always say fills pay the bills and so if someone wants to be a consistent client of you make it easy rebook them while they're in person don't require a huge deposit or deposit at all for for rebookings fills if this is a client you've been seeing if yeah. you even if you just see them for a full set and they're like oh my gosh i love this yeah. then say hey let's book you again yeah don't don't be like just Venmo me the thirty dollar deposit because they've already paid you. They've already paid you. They've it's already, awkward. They've it's already weird. tipped you. It's awkward. Just get them back on your books and build that trust where they're going to show up to their appointment. You're going to do their lashes. Hundred percent. Be their 100%. girl. Um, anything else you want to touch on with being easy to find, easy to book with? I mean, it's really simple. The other thing with being easy to find is like post your work online. Like yeah. post it everywhere you can. It doesn't like, matter what level you're at too because. Yeah. I always say this. My work was ugly. It can be it ugly. It was ugly. And it's I okay. was booked. You were. Till dust till dawn every single day in Alaska of all places because um, I was posting my work. And whether you know it or not, someone else out there, even if you're hard and critical on yourself, someone else is looking at your work and thinking, dang, that looks really good. Dang, that looks really good. <laughs> that was real nice. I want I, them. I want that. Yeah. And like... It, as long as you're posting consistently, people are seeing you. Because the other thing, too, like with lashes specifically, it's not a it's not a transparent marketplace. It's not like Amazon where someone can go online and see every single lash artist and see their work and see their prices. Mm -hmm. Like most people who are customers, who are potential clients, who they think, oh, I want to get lashes. They like Google like lashes here and they see like two chains and they're like okay well what other options do i have maybe then they go on instagram and they're like lashes and they look up a hashtag on instagram yeah. of like lashes anchorage and then your work could be the first one that they see yeah. that is like reasonable. i remember back in the back in the day i was like the only one hashtagging my work appropriately 100 and so when people that was a big when reason people looked up book. anchorage mega volume it was you were like the only person no, i was saw. the only one they saw 100%. i just dominated the you hashtag. did and so like there's that's why like we recommend that people don't post their stuff on Facebook Marketplace yeah. because Facebook Marketplace kind of is a it is kind of like Amazon. People are looking for a deal. Yeah, and people are only, people who go on Facebook Marketplace looking for lashes are just looking for what is the cheapest lashes I can get. And so yeah. then everyone on Facebook Marketplace is just a race to the bottom. They're all trying to undercut each other. No one cares about the quality on Facebook Marketplace, but if you are posting just everywhere you're like on Instagram, you make like a Google My Business page so you're showing up on Google, you have your website, you have you can put put yourself on Yelp, you put yourself like wherever. Amen, Elliot. Like you can be the first person that people see you're they're not comparing your price to everyone else on like facebook marketplace or craigslist goodness gracious do not post your lash <laughs> there do not are post your lash, services there on craigslist. Are oh, that, on absolutely craigslist. there are so many and half of them are human trafficking <laughs> <laughs> but do not post your lashes on facebook i will also say is there is always a market it may be smaller but there is always a market for people that want an expert there's always absolutely. a market for people that want to see the most experienced highest price person in their area 100%. they are going to be harder clients to get Yep. But they are well worth it. Absolutely. No, that is who you want. So if you're starting out and you're not great and you are maybe you've been in the industry for a couple months, you just got out of beauty school, like 
practice every day, like yeah. try to get better hundred yeah. percent. But if you're just trying to get those clients at the beginning, make sure your prices are like reasonable for your area yeah. and then charge whatever you can and post your work everywhere you can take possibly models, online yeah. and take model sets, get your work out there, get practice out there on like people's faces. Yeah. You'll get better. And then the goal should be that you within I mean, within a year, within six months to a year, people could be at the point if they're practicing regularly where you're one of the best artists in your area. Absolutely. I truly believe that. Absolutely. 100%. I've seen artists go from not good to very, very good Absolutely. very quickly. I mean, we had a student last month uh, who took, I was a little wary because she was taking a class or training and a mega volume training within the same month. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, girl. But I told her, I was like, I need you to dedicate an at least an hour or two of your day mm -hmm. to working on this little silicone mannequin. I, I need you to do that, yeah. you know, before I can in good conscience certify you for an advanced technique within a month. And she's 100%. killing it. Yeah. And her, because she's willing to do those at home hours. Yeah. Well, the, that's the, the crazy thing is a lot of lash artists who are charging lower prices yeah. and who are like, you know, it's hard for me to get booked. It's, um, they they are like you know what I'm just gonna post my stuff on Facebook. Hopefully I'll get a few clients, and they probably will. Yeah. They don't practice. No. They don't practice. They don't get better. And like if you want to kill it in the lash industry, just practice. Yeah. Like that's really like the basic. The basic people level. that do well practice. The people that do well practice. Like you, when we were first dating, like when we first started dating, you were not great. You were just doing classics. <laughs> yeah. And I thought they were amazing. Yeah. Now I look back on it, and I'm like, oh my gosh. What what kind of a map is that? <laughs> what are we doing here? The isolation. Are we lashing twenty five percent? Look at those bases. Look those at are those so bases. thick. What were you doing? Yeah. And and the sky glue. Yeah, but the thing is, you practiced. You were you got obsessed with, especially once you like discovered mega volume and you started doing that. You yeah. were practicing like three four hours a day. Like yeah. you would come home and you would just sit on your bed mm -hmm. and you would practice. Like her room at her house, <laughs> you guys was covered in glue. <laughs> Like her carpet needed to be torn out and replaced when yeah. she left. And I'm not saying do that. That is not required. Like you can absolutely practice without making a mess. But like you, your entire life, like you were either taking clients or you were like reaching out to girls on Instagram or you were practicing. And that yeah. was like your entire life for like uh, over a year. Yeah, absolutely. And in that year, you went from not being great being yeah. like average but you know what's so funny is everyone's like how did she do it how did she do it? She, what they're did like you do? there's got to be something different about madison there's like a lot i feel like a lot of people do look at you and they're like madison like she has like this natural skill it's it's unobtainable you do it so effortlessly but it's like and you, i'm like it's i so would easy hope i do you. it so effortlessly it's taken thirty five thousand hours to yeah. get here oh yeah no you you just <laughs> spent so much time that's yeah. literally all really, it is it'd be really embarrassing if i was it'd, not it'd very be good super embarrassing if you sucked honestly um, i feel like a lot of people could probably get as good as you without spending as much time absolutely maybe i was <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe you're slow i actually am, i'm very grateful that i took um videos where um I, I took videos of myself practicing like yeah. probably back in 2018 and you know that trend where it's like if a hacker says give me ten thousand dollars <laughs> or i'll leak your fo photos yeah. i would probably give him 10k not to release that <laughs> <laughs> i'd be like do not show that to people i'm so embarrassed it was really bad um i was just lashing with like strips of tape on people's forehead and just oh, like yeah. lashes everywhere oh yeah um second thing is having absolutely impeccable customer service skills. 100%. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's huge. And a lot of people... Lash artists play themselves. A lot of people don't think about it because as a lash artist, like the focus for the whole industry is like product and technique. Mm -hmm. It's like everyone... Because those are the things that people can sell you. Like you can buy product from people. And so product companies are going to be like, hey, our product will make you better. Yeah. And then trainers who are doing teaching trainings, which oftentimes a lot of products have their own trainings. Yeah. They're like. Most brands do both. Yeah. Most brands do both. They're like, take our training. You'll get better so that you can charge more money and you can uh, make more and you can get fully booked and use our products so that your quality of your work is better and your retention is better and you can get more money and you can fill your books. But there's like the soft skills of being a lash artist are like you can't sell someone like this is how you talk to your clients but like it's so important you need it you need it you gotta have it i have i have heard from so many lash artists like like students of mine that have 
impeccable technique. I mean, their skills are gorgeous. I would get my lashes done by them all the time. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, what is missing? Why can't they be fully booked? And I, sp- you know, I'll spend a day with them. And it's, it's happened once in a while. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you don't know how to speak to people. And to clients. To clients. Yeah. And, and you're. And it's a skill. It's like. It's a skill. It's not. It's, it's a muscle memory. It's not like a, a moral failing. No, it's not It's not at like all. an issue with them as a person. It's like it's a skill learning how to talk to clients yeah. really well. And I think my years of Brazilian waxing did pay off in that yep. sense because I was uh, having to make people feel very comfortable around me when they were scared of me. And so oh, yeah. I, I developed this script almost where, you know, from the moment they walked through the door to the moment they left, they would be so comfortable with me. It was it wasn't just like, hey, girl, come on back. How's your day? Get undressed. Be no. right back. You were okay. like, if I'm going to do Brazilians, I am going to be <laughs> the, the bra- best darn the best Brazilian <laughs> waxer on earth. Yeah. And so just making people feel safe and comfortable and loved and nurtured. Like at the end of the day, people just want it's so much more than a service. People want to be uh, they want to feel beautiful. They want to feel loved. They want to feel like you're their girl. You care about them. What they tell you is confidential. They want all of that. 100%. And it, 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 it does take time, but it's really worth it to see. Um to you know figure out how you you communicate best and well because for a lot of clients you see them more than their friends absolutely like you for like there's i mean just imagine like how many of your friends do you see two hours every two i barely see my friends yeah exactly my friends see me once a year and they're like how you doing girl yeah we don't have any friends (laughs) (laughs) i'm kidding um but yeah you like you're seeing these people so much so like the way you interact with them is so important and like so what what do you think are the like kind of key cornerstones of having a good relationship with your clients I think learning to master the balance between friendship and client relationship. I think there is such a fine line where you truly are friends with someone, but you still have that trust and that boundary where it's like, okay, I am still, you know, a service provider. Like we, Mm -hmm. but when people start to open up to you, like really, I feel like a lot of people shut it down. People shut it down. Yeah. But it's like, take that opportunity. You could build a clientele that feels like your best friends, or you could build a clientele that feels like your clientele Mm -hmm. and, and Mm -hmm. really learning to ride that, that, that um line of okay i need to get comfortable remembering details about their life you know asking about their family their job you know how they're like what they did today um what they care about what is coming up in their life really focus on events coming up in their life and Mm -hmm. remember what's happening and then like revisit so you create kind of like a timeline because then there's always new stuff to talk about because you see them every two weeks so every two weeks there's gonna be some new there absolutely um and, uh, you know, learning how to read people when, when they're tired, when they want to sleep, or if it's an appointment, where I have some clients where I can tell when they are exhausted, they need to mm-hmm. rest and I can accommodate that. Oh yeah. And yeah. Really, you don't have to talk to them. No. no. Or, you know, if they're really in a chatty mood, I mean, if you're someone that can lash and talk, lash and talk. Oh yeah. Well, honestly, I feel like. I talk every appointment. I feel like per dollar, mm-hmm. the best skill you could learn on like for, on like an economical basis is learning how to lash while you talk. Absolutely. I think that will make you more money <laughs> than taking another training. 100%. Absolutely. Like if you if you get like a new training on how to like do uh like some new technique or something. Yeah. Like you can charge a little more for that. Like you up your skills like you can charge more, but if you learn how to lash and talk and like chat and like have a good time at the same yeah. time, like you can charge way more (laughs) yeah and as far as impeccable customer service outside the bed like from the moment someone contacts you whether they send you a dm a lot of lash artists can be very hostile the way they speak to people online and it it rubs clients that's like the first interaction that someone has with you yeah so you need it to be even if someone even if someone has a stupid question like if someone messages me and says how much for lashes you do not say 180 dollars and i and i don't say um like haha it's in my highlights babe you know or something like that like i will take the time to and i put myself and you know what i do i put myself in their shoes and i'm like wow this person was so excited to uh chat with me they actually got so excited they rushed their dms trust trust always says this trust always goes think of it as they're so excited to message you how much how much oh oh, oh, no (laughs) don't think of it as a bad thing and so i always will respond and i'll say um hi love thank you so much for getting in touch um All my pricing and availability can be found on my website. If you're looking to book an appointment, um, you know, like this is my work. I look forward to chatting with you. And then if you have any more questions, you know, reach out to me. Love, Maddie. Mm. I mean, have a copy and paste in your notes. Oh, yeah. Copy and paste it. Something that makes people feel like you took the time to respond to them, answer their question, 
you know, what what they asked you and then direct them to somewhere where they can conveniently book. Don't respond too quick, though, because then they'll know you copy and pasted it. <laughs> Maybe wait, wait like a minute or two. Yeah. And don't and don't post your policies and your um, prices all over your Instagram. It can sound no. like you're yelling at people. A lot of people's bios are like deposit required. No kids. Um, books closed. You know, it's like people with all one, the X emojis. The one thing in like marketing that's like a, a big rule that like marketers will live by is like people will decide whether or not to buy your product within the first half a second of seeing it Absolutely. and so if the first thing they see is you like yelling at them or you like subtweeting one of your clients yeah. like just got no showed again like, sometimes people like, make reels that are just like tur they turn off potential clients 100 percent, 100 percent. if their first thing that they see from you is like hey i just did this set i'm really proud of like we're like look at this beautiful wispy set i did look at this beautiful cat yeah. eye like look at that dark mega volume yeah. and then they go to your they like click on your profile and then they see like uh lash art as i specialize in mega volume and i rent from this i work at this beautiful space and like book online here like i'm yeah. accepting new clients they're like oh awesome cool and then they click on it and then they can see your prices and then but by that point they've already made an action to book with you and so if they see your prices then it's much less likely that they're going to uh like turn away because they're like well they're already here so they're like oh well i'll just book absolutely impeccable customer service is, is key and the best lash artists they do it well and they do it consistently 100 percent. third thing which kind of piggybacks off that is number three <laughs> number three baby third thing that piggybacks off that is uh, a differentiated service. And this is what gets into how you can charge very high prices for yes. what you do. A lot of people are like, okay, well, there are other people in your, in your area doing mega volume work that looks like yours. They have the same amount of trainings. Um, you know, they, a lot of them have more, a lot of, a lot them, of them have more, more training. Um, why are you charging double than them? Like, why is that? And they can't wrap their mind around how that is. It's True. a differentiated service in the mind of the client. When your customer thinks about your service, they cannot compare it to what anyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. And there are things that you have done to make that true. And so what are those things that you've done that make it so that when your clients think about the thought crosses their mind of like, oh, Madison, well, it's a, this is a little expensive for me. I don't know if I want to keep doing this. But then they think about it and they're like, no, I there's no, nowhere else I could go. I actually did a little verbal survey. I didn't tell you, but I did a little survey because I was preparing for this podcast and I asked Ooh. a few of my close clients um, like why they see me. <gasps> I did. What's the data? I did. <laughs> What's the data? What's the data? <laughs> Let's crunch um, these numbers. And a few of them said, if I stopped doing lashes or if I... Um, just retired from lashing altogether and referred them out that they would never get lashes again. Why is that? Is that I? Why? I asked them and they were like, I can't like imagine like liking my lashes as much, being as comfortable and like enjoying my time as much. It made me want to cry. Um, and I had some clients, I had some clients that were like, um, also a few of my clients told me that when they originally booked with me, they were searching out the highest price artist in the area. Oh, they a lot actually, of people, more people do that than you would think. Yeah. They actually looked up on Google when you have the little dollar signs, they clicked the $4 signs. They were like, who is charging the most? Because you can probably assume that that work that they're is going to be, be the best. 100%. Yeah. And, and it really just got down to like in their mind, getting to know me over that year, they have been educated to the point where they know so much yeah. about lashes that they see me as an expert rather than an artist yeah. or a lash tech. I've never called myself a lash tech. No. Yeah. Not one time. I've always yeah. said I am a master lash artist. Instantly, if you want to start charging more, specialize. call yourself a lash artist. And specialize. Yeah, specialize. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I moved here, I, I always marketed myself as a specialist in mega volume, mm -hmm. meaning that this is something that I do better than anything else. Yep. That if you're and people are looking for a specialist, if you want to be fully booked, oh yeah, be like niche down. Like yeah, that's true. Like a lot of art lash artists, I think they want to offer like oh I gotta offer like classic, I gotta offer hybrid, I gotta offer volume, I gotta offer mega volume, I have to offer all these things. I need to do brow lifts, brow oh. tints. I need to do everything possible. Do whatever you want because then. If someone finds my profile, yeah. no matter what they want, I have a service for them. Which is which is awesome. You will be. You can get clients, but you will long term make more money by only offering one thing. Because there's riches in the in the niches. In the niches, and sure. um, a lot of people are looking for someone that does the thing they want the best, and you can always yep. guarantee that there's going to be. Yep. And uh, and that, that does to an extent depend on your market. Like if you're in a place like 
Phoenix. Yeah. Then there's enough people that there are plenty of people here who just want to see someone who is extremely good at yeah. Mega Volume and who they don't care how much they're charging. I'm going to restart the video real quick. Okay. Okay, we're going again. All right, we're back. Uh, granted, area does play, you know, a role in how much you can charge, um, but it does like 100 percent. i feel i feel for my girls in nebraska because oh yeah no rural america is probably the worst southern it's, utah is probably one of the worst yeah, places there's difficult there's d more difficult places yes um but do your best you know oh yeah you can absolutely be the highest priced person in southern utah that's just going to be lower than the highest priced person in la yeah absolutely and and that's just a it's just a product of the market yeah. and and how many people there are there. So don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, like if Cause, you're because if you're like, girl, I live in a cornfield and I cannot charge more than eighty dollars a fill. It's okay. That's don't okay. Worry, don't worry about it. That's okay. Start doing <laughs> online trainings. Yeah. Do uh, make products. Yeah. Like do. I'll buy them. There's there's, <laughs> there's other things you can do, I'll but like you. there's also like a hard truth is that if you want to charge a ton of money for lashes and you just you like doing lashes, you want to get really good at it, you want to charge a lot. And you live somewhere where it can't support it, move. We did. Like we did. Like yeah. Madison had topped out in Anchorage. Like my you could week, not. My charge three one. week fills in Anchorage, Alaska, were one hundred and thirty five dollars. Yeah. My clients were still tipping me like crazy. Yeah, they were tipping you crazy. You could have raised them probably a bit, but there would have got. It would have gotten to a point where yeah. you no one would book with you. I needed a bigger market, and you I need a and I market. needed to be in an area where people. Um, we're just like it was a more beauty centered culture 100%. and people get certain people people get their stuff down here you know oh my gosh scottsdale arizona is like i mean aside from la <laughs> it's probably the best market for when lashes. i was in anchorage i was like i am a 10 and then i moved to scottsdale and i was like i am a four <laughs> you're always a 10 to me baby <laughs> I, I got to scottsdale and i was like oh no i'm ugly <laughs> i'm ugly aren't i oh no <laughs> i'm nar are <laughs> nar I was in Alaska. I thought I was a supermodel. <laughs> you were and are. But here they're like. Uh, yeah. Well, you are a natural are supermodel people here. People are beautiful. There are, there are alien supermodels Oh, here. and boy, are there beautiful women in Alaska. There are beautiful oh, women yeah. in Alaska. But I'm saying like people oh. really, really put an emphasis on like their self-care here. Oh, yeah. People care more. And well, the other thing too is two things. In Alaska um everyone is wearing parkas all the time yeah so you can't really tell you can see like <laughs> this much of them yeah and two everyone's sad I and know. i feel like if you're sad you're not as pretty and you were the happiest person in alaska so therefore you were the hottest person it really in alaska. devastated me how depressed a lot of my oh, clients were so many of them were it so devastated sad me. i was sad that's why we moved i was depressed i hated Did you know it. that you were i i mean you were sad you think you were depressed? I was depressed. You were depressed? Yeah, Leah. Buddy. The last year we lived in Alaska. I mean, kind of same. I didn't tell you, but I was depressed. Oh, buddy. I was actually really sad. It was rough. I was really sad. That last year was rough. Yeah. But I was just talking about it, but the last year that we lived in Alaska, just side note, I worked 12-hour lash days. If you've ever worked a 12-hour lash day- You know. Like, you deserve a public holiday. Also- You deserve not, compensation. You you deserve compensation. Yeah. I, I had nerve damage in my hands, and I was working- yep. uh, Well, no, I was working seven days a week. Seven days a week. You, well, I, you were lashing six days a week. So that seventh day was like- And then I, ta and then I taught like trainings a, on Sundays. Training was a nice little and break. And I had no time to even feed myself, and so I got addicted to bang energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> the goofiest addiction of We're all really time. We're really spilling it all today, Other babes. people getting addicted to, to hard drugs. No. Madison addicted to bang energy. Because I literally had to lash Don <laughs> No, yeah, you would wake up, drink a bang, get hype, and then you would go <laughs> in, lash for 12 hours. Do the best 12 one-hour fills of my best life. Best 12 one-hour fills. cry. Not take lunch. Just be shaky. Come home, eat a, um, a cashew, a vegan cashew cheese noodle bowl. Oh, girl. And then crash. And do it all again, and baby. And do it all again the next it day. It was a lifestyle. You it know, was a I was, lifestyle. I was in the last trenches. Start from the bottom. Tell you what. So anyway, yes. Um, having, a having a differentiated product, having something that people in their minds, they see it as so valuable that they actually think they're getting a bargain by seeing you. Oh, yeah. No, th that's the thing, too, is where your prices are right now, you could absolutely raise them probably another $30, $40, and you would still be fully booked. 100%. Yeah. But you would probably lose a couple clients and then you would replace them with new ones. But the thing is, where you're at right now, it, your relationships with your clients 
I think matter more than, you know, making an extra 10K a year. I would lash my clients for free. 100%. If you're my client, pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> But no, but no, I, I love them so much. I, I think, emo- I think emotionally I've, I've capped out at my prices. Like I 100%. think, and that's the thing is like, you don't have to charge more if you don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. And that's okay. Like it, I mean, charging like, look, look at Katie. Talk about Katie too. Like her prices. No, Katie and I are built the same way yeah, in, 100%. In, in which like we have an emotional cap of like, okay, we know that like we're comfortable charging this and we could charge more. Katie is our light heart trainer. She is one of the best lash artists ever. She's my best friend. She's yeah. I'll be honest. She's my bestie. I'm, I'll honestly be honest. Katie's my best friend. I love Katie. I Every time I see her, I'm so happy when she comes in. I mean, I want to cry even think about her. But we have a, we have an episode coming up, but, um, yeah, stay tuned. Y- yeah. I, I think at this point I've kind of emotionally capped out. At, 100%. At and price. like Katie, where $210? she's at. $210. <laughs> no yeah i know you say that but yeah and when my crazy. clients tip me 50 dollars, on I'm top like, of that you're I, like i did a full set the other week and my client tipped me 80 dollars. yeah i texted my you mom. also you also did a full set last week and just skipped the tip screen because <laughs> you're like no i do i skip the tip screen <laughs> every once in a while because you're like, like i don't i don't want to so yeah anyway the it's third okay. third fourth way and final way that i i think you can you will be booked is what was the fourth way uh i don't know you wrote it it was a differentiated product easy to find easy to book with an impeccable experience um and what was the last one uh we can look it up can we just like cut this i mean honestly that's can we play some elevator music we could we'll we'll play some elevator music but i think those are the big ones i don't don't think there's any other big ones right those are the big ones can you look uh yeah i'll look right now do you want to talk about anything else while i do um or we can cut this out yeah we can just cut it out seven minutes yeah we'll just right, cut this a little bit this. write a note i'll write a little note what's the fourth way okay hang on okay hang on let me find it first media Oh. Client education. That's Client education. Can That's we restart? Can we yeah. cut that bit? Here, let me go to my notes. Is the camera still going? Yeah. Uh, episode uh, 37 items. 37 and then cut. Okay. All right. We got it. Okay. Fourth thing. Um, for think guys, it's late at night and I'm rubbing my last two brain cells together. Bah! Bah! <laughs> okay. So, uh, for thing, um, which is very, very important. A lot of lash artists just assume their clients know things, but the fourth and most important thing I would say, um, is, is having your clients trust you and having impeccable client education skills. Yes. Meaning that from the moment they meet you, that consultation sets them up for knowing that they can trust you mm-hmm. with the health of their eyes, with the integrity of their natural lashes, with their, with their, uh, s- styling and desired look in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of lashers, they come and they say, okay, what do you want? Show me a picture. Okay. Lay down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to some extent, you know, maybe you're a genius and, and that's fine. But I mean, really thoroughly going through, what does this person want? Mm-hmm. How can I achieve it in a healthy way? How can I best style their eye shapes? If you're styling people properly and you can actually make or break their face shape. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, people can literally like they age backwards when they get lashes sometimes. Oh, yeah. And some people, sometimes they age 10 years forward. Yeah. Um, I've gotten lash looks that are not flattering. Um, sure. But uh, really going through a thorough in-depth personal consultation of like figuring out what they want, how you can achieve it, showing them pictures of your work Um. And then uh, during the entire process, even after they become a regular client, educating them on every step so that they see you as an expert that cares about you, that cares about the integrity of their lashes, that cares about, you know, the style they're doing, um, that doesn't just see you as another client to get in and out the door. Like really learning how to take your time and and meet all of those people's pain points, for Mm -hmm. lack of a better word, Mm -hmm. and and execute. I think client education is huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's big. And like because it shows you care. It yeah, shows you've 100%. invested your money and your time into education. Yeah. And yeah. and spending the time to like actually map two people's faces instead of like slapping the same cat eye on everyone. Yeah. I was who would that. do that? Me. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but also 
uh, even even having consultations after the first appointment. Like I think every th- mm-hmm. third appointment I would have like with checking in and being like, hey, is this like actually what you want? I would say, how do you like your lashes? Is there anything you want to change? Even if it's outrageous, even if they're like, oh, my gosh, girl, I want to go from Megas to classic today. Just Whoa. figuring out what they want. You don't have to do it, too. You can talk through yeah, it with them. You, you can be like, well, maybe, maybe. Yeah, there's there's um there's so much common ground you can find with your clients when you learn how to step out of that lash artist language and into mm-hmm. that client language and be like, okay, what does this person actually want? Um, and then like, I have one client who, sh- I mean, she thinks I'm a genius. She thinks I'm a genius. And she like asked me questions on things. And when I give her an answer, she's so amazed that I had an answer for it. She, like I, one time she asked me, she was like, why do you get up from your chair and stare at my lashes from the front every single time? And I told her, I said, because if I stand up and look at your lashes from the front, I can kind of get a good look. I can kind of pop the hood and see if you have any lashes out of place, see if you have any texture that we don't want. Um, and I just make sure each of your eyes are symmetrical from the front. She was like, that's really cool. No one's Cause ever that's done. where people are going to look at you from. Yeah, she's, she's like, no one's ever done that before. And she's like, I've seen 10 know. lash artists and no one's ever taken the time to look at me from different Amazing. angles and make sure that I'm symmetrical every time. Yeah. Just taking the time to. Doing all the little things. Yeah. Making sure they have inner corners, babe. Yeah. yeah making sure, um, you know, that they're that they're comfortable the whole time and that. Uh, oh, and also under, uh, you will retain clients a lot longer if they're very, very educated on aftercare. True, true, true. A lot of people, uh, you know, have that. um that idea that lashes have damaged their natural lashes in the mm-hmm. past. Um, and a lot of that is just due to, to poor client education. Mm-hmm. They didn't know how to take care of them, mm-hmm. you know, or their lash artist, you know, was negligent and do a good job. But um, a, a lot of clients, if, if you take that extra 20 minutes at the end of their service to run them through how to properly care for their investment, mm-hmm. they'll trust you and they feel like you actually care about them long term. I always tell people, I say, I want you to have lashes when you're 90. Absolutely. Extensions and naturals. That's a goal. Yeah. That's a goal. Yeah. hundred percent. Mm hmm. So we could run through. Cliff it's why notes. it's why people also want to see trainers. True, like, true. Because w- I mean, people know they want to. So, there's people who want to get something that fits in their budget, and then yeah. there's people that want to see the best. Yeah. And you can charge more. If- at, and everyone at the beginning of their career, their client is the person who needs to find lashes that fit in their budget. And then I think the goal for every lash artist should be to have the clients that want to see the best. I will also best. I will also say if you're a client listening to this, don't be afraid to see someone that isn't very high priced because there are some beginner lash artists out That's there true. who are bomb That's who true. I would see. There's some and there's some very experienced lash artists that don't charge a lot because they love their clients. Yeah, you really have to find the person for you because like there are some beginners nowadays who they there's they have access to such good training and true. they have really worked on perfecting their skill even though they haven't been in the game for a long time. Oh, yeah. Like, lashes have evolved so Time much. Time doing lashes does not equal being better at lashes. Heck no. No. Sometimes it does. Sometimes like, it doesn't. Yeah, you need some time to get good. Yeah. But that time is like six months. Yeah. Like anyone could get really good. So in if six you're months. a beginner, practice and uh, own own your thing, girl. And then, yeah. you know, charge your worth while you're a beginner and charge your worth when you get advanced, you 100%. know. But but have it in your client's mind that, that your prices are not going to be where they are forever. Yeah. Yeah. And just know that you could be charging over 200 bucks for a fill. One day. Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe in you. 100%. Um, so to recap, we got what was number one? Number one was uh, easy to find, easy to book with. Easy to find, easy to book Convenience. with. Convenience. Convenient. Where are you? Super easy. Mm-hmm. Where are you? <laughs> and make it easy. Yeah. Kind of simple. Number two. Uh, number two was it was um, impeccable customer service. impeccable customer service you want from step one from them walking in the door to when they leave and after they leave when you're texting them talking to them afterwards like you want every step of the way to be positive. so positive yep. and you want them to feel good you want to make them feel good about every single everything that happens when they see you mm-hmm. like you are doing a service for them but also people are going to be way more happy giving you lots of money if you make the process of getting that service so so nice yeah and like because because the actual process of getting lashes it's not the most comfortable thing in the world no. like you're laying there someone's kind of poking your eyes kind of scary kind of scary i have honestly gotten that's my the lashes thing too done. i've gotten my lashes done um like many many times where i'm like i'm held hostage i don't know how to leave i'm 100%. scared i'm and scared like, and i have like, been scared getting my lashes well, done. that's a huge part of like the customer experience too is like when they come in you have like five minutes to get them to trust you enough that they're comfortable with you having sharp 
pointy mm-hmm. tweezers you directly need, next to their to eyes. You need to narrate every everything step that of the you're way doing comfortably. Down. Yeah, so you're not like touching their eyes without them being prepared. You don't want it to be a surprise when your tweezers come down and like start pulling, yeah. pulling lashes impeccable, off their naturals. Impeccable, impeccable service. Yeah, there's so many little things that like just the the easy way to figure out what to do is just to think about what would make you comfortable if you were yeah. in your client's shoes and, and when in doubt be so kind to people just be well yeah just be so nice even all the if, time even if clients are mean even oh if, yeah if, if you have a nasty a nasty nelly a nasty nelly kill her with kindness oh yeah yeah you don't even to. don't even consider that she's being mean to you just every everything you do you are just being the sweetest person in the world yeah. whether they're nice to you or not We'll have an episode on firing clients, but I fired clients before where they came back and they were like, wow, that was unbelievably kind. Like, I cannot believe you oh, like, yeah. took the time to write everything that. you do. And if like if someone no shows you or if they do or if they're not taking if care someone no shows you assume they got hit by a bus, yeah, like 100%. be so kind yeah, to them. Absolutely. I can't stand when last hours go in their stories and they're like, guess who just got no showed? Ugh, people are so rude, guys. It's literally the holiday. It's like, bro, like if you do that, it's we're not, not cool calling to- you out, but we kind of are. It's not cool to be no showed, but also like you don't. Like, but it's it's it it you are shooting yourself in the foot. The way you react to things is a huge ripple effect because people 100%. see how you react. 100%. To things. Like we personally, Elita Madison, do not care if you're posting. Oh, I just got no showed again on your story. Like we don't care. We don't care. Do you think? But you are actively hurting yourself by doing that, yeah. and that's that's the only reason that I we have even been bring it hurt up. by clients unimaginably over the years. I have been abused by clients over the years, and I don't say that lightly. Like people have been horrible to me when i was they, starting yeah, out true. and the way i reacted to that in person and online like made me the last artist i am today oh yeah 100%. because those people like still have a good image of me oh yeah 100 percent. or they like, or they feel bad you've had clients bad. that have lied about their like kid getting hit by a car they're like sorry i, I can't come today my no, kid I, got no, hit by a car no, i had a client lie about their, their kid killing themselves remember? oh yeah yeah like who does that and i and i was so kind in my in my response yeah even though but it's like that's messed up. But you still were like, you know what? I it says am- more about you about how you 100%. react. You're like, hey, I. You're always gonna meet shitty people. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I won't be able to do your lashes anymore. I'm so sorry. Like, here's some great referrals. Sorry about your kid. Sorry about your kid. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, and then the fourth thing was. Um, well, it was. Oh, it was a differentiated third. product. Yeah, differentiated product. Get good. Yeah. get really good be different be different get good at one thing even like, if you're not good be different even if you're early in your career you're or you live in a small town you're like i have to do every service pick your favorite one yeah. like you can still offer those services but pick your favorite one get really good at it yeah like if you're average at 10 things and yeah. you're really good at one thing like you can keep doing those 10 things but people are gonna see you just for the one thing yeah people because a lot of your clients, they're just seeing you for one thing. Yeah. So if you're really good at that thing, you're going to have so many more people that are that are going to be way happy to see you and really happy to pay your prices. Like if you're if you really like doing hybrid sets, yeah. like get really good at hybrid sets. Charge more for it. Specialize Charge more in it. for Specialize it. Hundred percent. Specialize. 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 Yeah. That's and huge. And the um, fourth thing was client education. Client education. Being educated Big. and educating people kindly. Yep. Hundred percent. Um. Yeah, because then if your clients, if you educate your clients, you teach them things they didn't know before and they mm-hmm. can tell that you are teaching them those things because you care about them and you mm-hmm. care about the health of their lashes yeah. and you care about them having a good experience with you, then they will trust you and they will love you and they will keep seeing you forever. Um, I think that's it. I, I wanted think... to touch on one more thing. Oh, actually. yeah. What's up? Bloopers. Um, okay. So on the first topic, which was um it, oh a seamless booking process being easy to find yes. easy to book with um this is something i did in my business a couple of years ago and it changed the way people view my services um so and i want to change this in the industry permanently forever lash artists have the longest menu imaginable and it True. confuses potential bookings because yep. for the last you lose bookings because because for the last 20 years we've been taught to have classic hybrid volume mega on our menu and have mini fills 30 minute you know one hour fills two hour fills three week fills four week fills full sets um, foreign fills we have all these different prices for people mm-hmm. and it makes our menu look like mcdonald's True. and clients get confused and they book the wrong things because they don't True. know um and so one thing i did when i kind of pivoted my business to be more of a luxury uh more of a luxury service where people view it as a luxury is i simplified my menu down to be as simple as possible yeah you made everything the same price and my bookings exploded yep. because a client saw me as an expert they were like wow this girl has one price for everything yep. 
like I'm, she charges the same for classic and mega volume. I'm just paying for her time and skill. Hundred percent. And that's how I that's how I word it is. You're only paying for my time and my skill. Yeah. You're not paying for different styles of lashing. The product is negligible. The po- the product is it's nickel and diming people. Hundred percent. And and if you if you want the thing is I feel like a lot of clients at this point understand that like sure it char- it costs a little more to put more lashes on someone. Sure. But it's not a thirty dollar difference per <laughs> per fill. If you're charging thirty dollars more for mega volume than you are for classic, yeah. people are like, I think a lot of clients are smart enough to be like, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. And when I pivoted my menu, I had one or two clients ask me about it, and they're like, okay, well, why am I paying, you know, three hundred? You're using less lashes on me. No, I'm not. Like, no, no, that's what people would say. Right. That's what um, but. I kind of just said, you know, I want people to get what I, I worded it in their favor. I said, I want my clients to get whatever they want. Exactly. I don't I don't want them. to. You be, don't want people to get classic because it's the cheapest thing. No, you want them to get whatever they want and you want to be compensated well yeah. for your time. If someone really loves classic and I'll they want to get it. the best classic it's in the world. It's 350 for a false sure. set. People are booking it because they know I'll give them the best classic set of their life. Absolutely. And and they'll love them. 100%. Yeah. So so as far as being, um, you know, a convenient service to book, simplify your menu so that clients can understand it and have a fill price and a full set price. Yep. Yep. Easy, baby. Honestly, I, we should probably simplify yours a little more. Probably I, could. I think we could simplify way more. I think we could simplify more. I think we should take your advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to simplify more. I'm just going to have a button that says, give me lash. Give lash, me lashes. please. Lashes, please. Lashes, please. They click it and it goes onto my schedule. <laughs> it goes on your schedule. Two hours, I'll give you whatever yeah. you want. I mean, honestly, at this point, your menu could just be like, one week fill, two week fill, three week fill, full set. Yeah, and that's your whole menu. I think I still have like a couple other options. Yeah, you do. You still have you. St- we still have it separated by like classic volume, mega volume. Yeah, let's just make but, it like, all one thing. You don't even need it. No, because it's all the same price in the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's all the same price. I mean, the rationale that we had before for having it different was that while you were taking new clients, mm-hmm. it some people or a lot of clients who aren't like super familiar with your work, if they want to get classic, they want to click classic lashes yeah. and they want to know like i am booking a classic but set, at, the, but blah, at blah, this blah. point it's all one thing but yeah fill in full set baby. 100%. yeah um so yeah make it simple for clients because it's like when you go to a fancy restaurant there's like four things on the menu yep at the yeah, fanciest the, places. yeah that's a that's a good point the yeah. fancier the place the smaller the menu yeah yeah if you're offering like 10 different types of facials if you're adding if you're offering add-ons on your menu and yeah. you're like Which all, all great things you know and people will book them but yes. it's it's better for you in the long run to be able to charge more to yep. to really simplify and make it easy for clients to yeah. see and book. if you make your menu look like a very fancy restaurant then people be like, Ooh. yeah they'll be like okay Ooh, this, this is, nice. is this is a nice place this is very nice i will book this one <laughs> But if you if you give them like a thousand different options, one people will get overwhelmed. They'll yeah. move away, and then two people will be like, mm, "Something about this feels like Applebee's to me." Speaking of really fancy establishments, it's really late at night, and I think we should get a little treat and go to Hagen Dazs. I'm Dogs. so hungry. Want to go to Hagen Dazs? Let's go to Hagen Dazs. Okay. Can we get maybe like a little raisin canes or something before we go? <gasps> I was just gonna say maybe a little raisin. Canes. A little raisin canes. Is it cheat night? Is it cheat night? Oh my gosh dang okay guys well uh <laughs> we will see you later because we have a hot day to go maddie on. and ellie got a hot date <laughs> so we will see you next week on my, my lash, lash two brain, brain cells. cells smooches